just gone 7 a.m. and I'm out on my bike doing a 75 mile ride. I'll tell you a bit more about what I'm doing and why shortly. I'll be taking two short breaks on my way round. Both of them are, are historic Paris churches, which I think is really well worth visiting, showing you some points of interest. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll tell you about some of my upcoming plans for the next few months. It's coming up. <laughs> The route basically is from my hometown in Bath northwards and if you can imagine a balloon on a string, a kind of deflated balloon. So once we've reached the base of the balloon up near Iron Acton on the outskirts of Bristol, we're going to be going up one side of the M5 with the 7 estuary on our left and the motorway on our right. The first church will be there, a small hamlet called Hill. And then we'll turn southwards and we'll be coming down on the opposite side of the M5. The M5 will still be on our right, but we'll be coming down south back towards Iron Acton and then retracing this string in effect back to Bath. On that leg, there's a wonderful church near Michael Wood called St Leonard's at Tortworth. Anyway, that's the rough outline of the ride. I'll speak to you more when we get to the hill and our first church at St Michael's. We're now entering the very small hamlet of Hill. There's the boundary sign. And then what feels like over a mile after the boundary sign, you come to the heart of the village. It's a wooden bus shelter, the old school, which is now a village hall, which many cyclists from around here will be familiar with. And the Hill Micro Library, converted old telephone box. As a thought struck you, it did me recently, if it's so flat round here, why is it called Hill? And it's because the church is up on that little rise there. And when you go up there, you'll see it is quite a hill. But you cannot see the church from here. That's looking back the way we've come. Here's the sign. And there's a pathway that climbs up quite steeply actually. And then you go around the bend and you won't see the church until literally you're almost on it. Still can't see the church, even though we're almost there. It levels out here. The ground's this house there, going up a drive. There's a cemetery here. And then the final bit up to the church is up near where that seat is. Just see the church now for the first time. There's the track we've just come up. You'll see that cement mixer going along the road we've just come in from. Then in the middle distance, that's one of the power stations up here, either Barclay or Oldbury. See if I can zoom in. It's a bit quite a looking. There it is. And it's not till you get here, you realise just what a hill this is. And it suddenly occurred to me recently when I came here for the first time ever, only about a month ago, it's probably why the village is called Hill, because its central point of focus would have probably been the manor house and the church. And what a lovely church it is. It's got a bit of a Krypton factor gate, as often they do. There you go. <laughs> oh, wrong gate. It's a lovely old Cotswold stone church. And it's a classic layout, really. You've got the bell tower at the back, the west. The chancel's facing east. We're approaching from the south, so the entrance is through the south porch. And you approach it, then this pathway, you, you're reminded of your mortality <laughs> and your short lifespan by walking past graves as you approach the church. As usual, take my cap off as a mark of respect. Just before you go in through the door, there's this plaque here, and it says, Electric lighting was installed in this church in September 1952 as a memorial to King George VI. George VI, that's the Queen's father. He'd recently passed away then in 1952. And it goes on to say, The seven wrought iron brackets in the nave were designed, made, and presented by Mr. G. H. Roberts. The two are linked. So let's go in and have a look. 
freaking meaty door actually. And you come straight in through one of these velvet back curtains to retain the heat. And here we are. Actually feels really cozy in here and actually quite warm considering that wind's got a bit of a nip to it this morning. So there's the electric lights mounted on the seven wrought iron brackets that we referred to outside. So on the north side there's one, two, three, and on the south side, four, five, six, seven. At the back you've got the font by the bell tower. It's always tempting to pull those ropes, but I went. Look at that, that's a gem. Bare stonework here. Here it's more plastered. Something jumped out at me immediately here. That big box pew up there. It's massive, it's enormous. And it's almost got like its own ceiling with four posts. It's, it's a cross between a box pew, four post to bed. The other thing that jumped out at me, that ceiling or roof is almost the same height as the same plate on the pulpit. I've mentioned it before quite a few times in the olden days pulpits would sometimes have sound plates above them about a metre or so above. It was just to stop the sound dissipating into the ceiling so to project it and reflect it out. Sometimes they're stone, sometimes they're wood. They seem to correspond with the design of the pulpit. If it's a stone pulpit they tend to be stone sound plates and vice versa with wood. As you walk up towards the chancel quite often there's a step but here there's several and go through the arch onto the final step. I imagine this is because it's built on a hillside, I can't be sure. So let's just have a look through what would have been the property of probably quite a wealthy family. A box pew. I was told that they quite often were the property that would be either owned or rented by families who could afford them, the bigger probably corresponded to the wealthier people and the opposite and they'd be passed down through inheritance you know through the generations so they'd be the property of the family at some stage I expect this is probably be one and I expect it probably corresponds to the state out there but can you see is that seating all the way around so that means some of the people probably had their back or at least their side to the person giving the sermon I discovered recently via a CCT talk on Facebook that the actual contents of the sermon, the sound was much more important than the visual. And I said, ah, that explains sometimes why box pews are so high, because they think they couldn't possibly see over the top of those. They couldn't. It was for privacy. It was more important than they, that they heard the sermon than to actually see who was giving it. And I think that also probably corresponds with a lot of wall paintings, a wall art that I think was quite often taken out or covered over, painted over or plastered over around that time of the Reformation. It was seen as a distraction. I've heard stories that the sermons would be very long sometimes, an hour, hour and a half, possibly two hours, because people lived tough lives in those days and you know they wanted value for money on the Sundays. They wanted to come here and hear hope, inspiration and belief. And I've, I've heard about stories of people, you know, children playing with toys in box pews or people doing crochet or knitting so you know again it probably would explain the privacy that they wanted anyway up a step into the chancel get that immediate feel of a different part of the building lovely wooden beams as opposed to just the white plaster there and the different light my first thought when I came here oh that's probably a vestry it'll probably be locked but when I opened it, I discovered otherwise there's a separate chapel in here. Although the chancel door would have been for the clergy, the private entrance. And you can see there's store cupboards, cabinets there. So it may have doubled up as a vestry seats there as well, you know, where they would have kept their records and got changed. But this is like a separate chapel. Got a lovely feel to it. And back out into the chancel, which feels very light compared to that chapel in there. 
and then back down into the nave. Fairly standard pews, although there's some nice carvings on the edge of them. I'll try and film a couple. Lovely, lovely place. St Michael's at Hill, South Gloucestershire, in the Vale of Barclay, to be more precise. As I often do, I look at the visitor's book to see who was the last person who came here as a visitor and signed the visitor's book. And look, it's me <laughs> from the 17th of February. And before that, it was New Year's Day, local by look of it, Logan Road. I've just put Andy C, Bath Somerset. I put that time, cycled through many times. At long last, I've come to visit this lovely church. Amazing box pier with four boats to the ceiling. So I was taken by it then. 17th of February, 21st of March, Andy C, Bath. Again, lovely to come back. It is, and it's nice to share it with you this time. I just love that story about the old and the new. I mean, the electric lighting in the 1950s would have been transformational, I would have thought. That's looking back up where you've come. Okay, ride right back down to the road. I need to be careful here because I'm not on my hybrid bike with the wider tyres. So I need to be careful. I don't go flying along here. That's the worst bit. There we are, back at the gate in one piece. You may tell by the sound, I'm on this short stretch of A38. I'm in a bus shelter just near Slimbridge. I'm going to go up here about half a mile, turn right, and then we'll start making our direction change down there. This bus shelter is wonderful. Look at all these old pictures there. Look at that wonderful car there, the old SO garage slip. When I went to see my brother in Derry a few years back, we drove over the border. He goes over the border to get petrol. And we went into one in the Republic, literally about a mile or so from where he lives. And they came out and filled the car by hand, and then he went in and paid. I think he just handed over the, the notes to the guy, and he bought the change back. Just it brought back memories of that as a child. There's wonderful mural look, in the bus shelter. And this A38, I've mentioned it before, it's an old Roman road from Bristol up towards Gloucester. And that's the cam we're going to go across. On the map, it looks like Cambridge, but it's Cambridge. That's where the cam crosses this road. You can see there's a sharpness Gloucester Canal there, which runs alongside the Seven Estuary, which actually, that's quite clever. It's kind of represented by the blue ceiling. I haven't spotted that before. And there's the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust Slimbridge site. Wonderful. Anyway, I'm just stopping here to have some food, some sandwiches. Oh, look at that. Morris Fix Hardinge, Alistair Barclay, 11.53. Clearly it's to do with love and marriage, possibly. And here's some pictures of the Wetlands Wildfire Trust. Been there many times. Oh, look at that lovely aerial shot, probably from a drone of the church. There's Gloucester and Sharpness Canal, which you can ride and walk along. Cambridge Green. Wonderful. One of my favourite spectacles of nature, actually, seeing swans take off and land that wonderful whooping sound as they go over. I've just turned right eastwards off to south to North A38 and cut the corner off in this lay by. This is part of the old route before they straightened out. This was here last time. Look at this Illinois State Plate, land of Lincoln. Look. It's a beaut, isn't it? Cadillac. When I cycled across America, I went from San Francisco in California to Miami in southern Florida. And I went all through the states and saw the differences and the plates. And I have to say my favourite state was Texas. It was just a transition state really from west to east. A quarter of the journey. Massive. It's huge. But I picked myself up a souvenir. It was an old disused Texas state plate. 
I brought that home on the plane, still got that, it's in my bedroom on the wall. The other thing I remember about Texas was so many people spoke to me there because a lot of them had served in the US Air Force and they'd been stationed in Suffolk and West Germany and as soon as they heard me speak English they just wanted to talk and you know share their experiences. So many people came to talk to me in Texas. Just got such fond memories of that. Just up from that, in this laid by between off down this minor road here, we're going to be on quiet roads now. I'm now in the town of Cam, just climbing out of the Cam Valley actually. And when I took that minor road, I went past Cam and Dursley Station, then you turn left at a T junction, and after a couple of hundred yards, if you turn right soon after a shell filling station, you can cut through a housing estate. It's a bit bumpy, a bit like a runway, and then you turn right up this road then when you get opposite Knapp Farm Nursery you just follow this sign up here no through road except cycles and it would take us out to like a plateau traffic free and there's some fantastic views looking back down on Severn and then we'll emerge right at the foot of what I call Stinchcombe Avenue locals will know what I'm talking about but believe me I'll film there it's well worth filming it's beautiful any time of the year it's always nice there this is called Peeve Lands or Pebble Lands I'm not sure how you pronounce it you can see it's all now new housing it's a much nicer way to climb out the valley having lots of traffic behind you and a lot of it is like this and then we turn right here we're nearing the summit, not a car in sight. The quarry, Stinchcombe, yeah, that's right, it's, it's an old quarry, I believe. Obviously, you just need to be a little bit careful, as people could be walking up here. Final bit up to the summit, where that house is just beyond the tree. Then there'll be some great views overlooking the Severn. So I've just come up this way, to the right, Looking back at the Cotswold Escarpment. And this is looking back over the hills in the distance of the Forest of Dean and the slither of water to Severn Estuary. See if I can zoom in a little bit. You cannot see it from here, but you can just hear the roar of traffic of the M5. So we'd have come up somewhere between that slither of the River Severn and this ridge line, the other side of the motorway. And that's it looking up real big hills to Forest of Dean and this is what I call Stinchcombe Avenue coming into the village of Stinchcombe these wonderful trees lining this road look those wonderful daffodils as well oh look at the trees when I came up here last they still look very lacking in life wintry they just look like they're about to burst out now don't they in bloom No matter what time of the year you come up here, this avenue's always a, a pleasure to ride. So we are on this B road briefly, and then we're on this ledge. Then as it carries on climbing that way to the left, we're going to drop off it steeply down towards Michael Wood. You've got to be careful because this is a blind bend. And also, once you're on the road, it's very, very bumpy. You've got to be so careful down here. You don't go over the handlebars by hitting a pothole. There we are, traffic free. Look at these lovely yellow flowers in the verge. I love coming along here. I came along here on the Jack and Grace in, in January. And there's wonderful displays of snowdrops, crocus. When I was here back in February, about five or six weeks ago now, there was daffodils out. Just wonderful first signs of spring. Talking about spring, look at that field of rape just as the train goes by. We're now running down alongside the M5. You cannot see it, but it's just the overpowering sound. I'm not sure if he's coming up on the microphone. And see all these trees. We're just about to cut right through that. That's Michael Wood. It's a huge woodland. And there's some motorway services in there that drivers may be familiar with. 
microwave services. What also cuts through here is a little stream. It's actually called the Little River Avon. We're going to drop down into that valley, cut across it and then climb out. But as we go over it, there's something I want to show you. We're now right deep in the heart of Michael Wood. You can still just hear the roar of the motorway. So you get this tarmac, this major roadway running from Exeter up to Birmingham. In complete contrast, almost paradoxical, there's a lovely little stream running through these woods. I don't know if the microphone picked it up, but you can hear, really hear the clatter of a woodpecker. And unfortunately, I saw a dead woodpecker, a bit of roadkill back there, which is a shame. This is our turning off to the left, where we crossed the Little Avon. This wonderful bit of paradise, look at this. Double-edged sword paradise, actually. I'll explain why. Just going to stop here. This looks nice and tranquil now, but we had rain pretty much non-stop between September and late February. I mean, there's a few days, obviously, and you can see the damage it's done. Look, it's come along, eroded that bit of bank there, and this house here has lost a little bit of their driveway. I expect that'll be a while before it's uh, repaired. Probably a big structural job. And I expect that's going to have to go through many months of insurance. Gosh, look, there's a road barrier that just been knocked down 90 degrees. So paradise with a double-edged sword. <laughs> Beautiful. Gosh, I can see bits of brickwork in the stream there. Can you imagine the force of that water to wash that away? That's the way we've just come down from North Nibley. That's heading out of these woods and it'll cross over the motorway on a bridge and you can actually look down on Michael Wood Services which is just the other side of these trees Then we're heading up to Tortworth. And this is the Little River Avon we're about to cross. Up there ladies and gentlemen I can't think of a better bluebell display in this part of the country. There may be but I don't know of them. May, early June. This is well worth coming up here. It's just blankets carpets and blew up through there and after that you get all like the wild garlic in there just that whiteness and the smell of the overpowering smell of it i can see the uh, leaf of it there here we are a couple of miles further on we've climbed out of the valley and we're passing through the top with state land climbing up there you can hear the roar of the motorway over that hill in the distance but it's heading that way and we're sort of heading that way so we'll be leaving it shortly you can tell this is an old estate look i don't even see that building there that yellowy orange one it's painted now but the roof is like turret shape there's a corresponding one on the other side but this is st leonard's church i've ridden by her so many times thought it's probably locked might go and have a look one day around the churchyard came in here recently and it was open hoping it's going to be open today. It's got a very country estate feel to it. You, you get a feel for that after a while when you go in churches. That's where we're going. Plenty of interest in there. When we get to the gate, I'll leave my bike outside and I'll tell you a little bit about the purpose of this ride today, really, really why I've chosen this distance. The reason for this longer ride today is I've been building up the mileage over the winter doing some Audaxing. I've done two 100 kilometre events, both fantastic. The Audax Club Bristol Jack and Grace, which actually rode this way. And in February, Fletcher's Flapjack from Chippenham. Excellent event. Can't recommend both of them highly enough. I've entered another one that I've ridden many times before in May from Orberston. I think that's Bristol CCC. And I've entered another 100 kilometer event in June just before I go off on my summer holiday so that would be ideal preparation for what I want to do it's from the middle of Bristol and it's heading over to the north Somerset coast Cleves and Yatton that sort of area the reason for today then I'm trying to build up my endurance and burn off a bit of winter fat it gets harder each year the older you get once the clocks go forward I'm going to start doing some overnight trips I mentioned it 
at the end of the last video I want to ride and visit all the Wiltshire Churches Conservation Trust properties. On New Year's Day I did part one. I rode over Imber Ranges, very limited access there because it's MOD land, it's a firing range. I went to St Giles Church there, that was part one. Part two, I rode from Westbury down to Salisbury, got a train home. That was exploring the churches in the south western quadrant. My last video was exploring the churches in the southeastern quadrant. And then sometime in the next few weeks, I'm going to get a train to Pusey and explore the two northern quadrants. I've worked out the route. It's basically in a T-shape. I'll start off in Pusey, go north, retrace a little bit, and then I will stay in Hillmartin Church overnight. It's a champing church, so I'll have to hold in the church myself for the night. I'll book it. On day two, I'll be going to the top of the T, going to Lee Delamere, and then turning around, going all the way back along to north of Swindon, Inglesham. There used to be a youth hostel there, I believe it or not, years ago, close to the 90s. That'll be the final of the 21 churches. Then zoom down to Swindon, probably hop in Wetherspoons just to avoid rush hour and have a few drinks and a meal, and then get an evening train home to Bath. But also, got my sights on exploring the River Wiley. Going to its very source in Maiden Bradley in Wiltshire. It's kind of in a boomerang shape. It goes round, bows round, and it joins the River Avon in between Wilton and Salisbury. And what I'm going to do, there's a corridor either side of that river. I'm going to go and visit all the churches either side of that. 28 miles, 30 churches. That would be an overnighter, bivvying or camping. Whether I can get in all the churches, I doubt it very much, but I know at least some of them I can. So that's what's coming up in the next few weeks. Firstly, can't wait to go in there. I will leave my sunglasses and hat out there. That wonderful bell tower. It's almost like a wedding guy, isn't it, in tears. The sanctuary handle. Oh yes, it is open. And you come into the bell tower. It feels like a porch, but it's actually not. It's the bell tower. It's got a very community feel to it, look. All the utility stuff there, but notice ports, wheelchair ramp. Don't think that's open. No. That probably access up in the bell tower. Because it was so tiered, I wonder if there could possibly be classrooms up there, old fashioned classrooms. I just don't know. Let's go inside. As usual. I'll leave something here. That gives you an idea of what it costs to keep a well-maintained building like this open every year. <laughs> a squeaky door. Now this, I've never seen a font like that. They often have a cover on them. They're locked because obviously they're lead lines. So, you know, there's the chance of heritage crime. But that's almost <laughs> like we've got um, a pulley chain, isn't it, to lift it up. I've never seen one like that before. So we straighten the main aisle, heading forwards. Call those candles. Heard a great quote the other day about candles, candle makers, by a very acknowledged ecologist, so acknowledged I can't remember his name. And he said something along the lines of, even the finest candle makers of the day could have never imagined electricity. And it was a metaphor about peer review. He wasn't very complimentary about it, actually. His point being, scientific discoveries are quite often on the fringes. They're by outsiders. So how can people possibly agree about something that hasn't been discovered yet? Anyway, let me walk forward. Oh, yes, I remember that. Stone steps and stone base up to a very grand carved wooden pulpit. Brass handrails and rope. And the chancel, the lovely tiling, softens the light subtly into this sort of place of higher worship. Imagine that's the vestry in there where the clergy would have got changed and kept their records. Steps up the altar. 
those ward seats I was mentioning once before but I love this in here I thought it was a kind of burial chamber its purpose now is a chapel of peace and reflection the chapel of peace this area was created for quiet prayer in the 1980s and this is what I wanted to show you the stained glass above the tombs is pre-reformation gosh that's lucky to have survived probably 1472 and contains the portrait and the voices of King Edward IV though he does not seem to have had a direct connection with the church and that's what they're referring to up there I'll try and zoom in because unfortunately the camera's going into direct light the stint century stained glass and the same here you can see the oh is that coming out I'll try and get some photographs I probably can control the light more with that wonderful place it's so quiet here having heard the roar of that motorway and the wind for the last few hours all the plaques and tablets on the wall memorials and then there's this tomb of this gentleman here the effigy and it says the Throckmorton tombs probably by Garrett Johnson who sculpted Shakespeare's bust at Stratford Briefly, the Throckmortons lived at Torkworth Court, a moated manor house. And it goes on to say, the Throckmortons were related to Bess of Corton, Court, Warwickshire, who married Sir Walter Raleigh. Local tradition has it that he did his courting here. It may be true since they named their first son born out of wedlock. Damery. Damery was where we crossed through Michael Wood, came up over that bridge. A connection to Shakespeare and Sir Walter Raleigh. Amazing what you see and discover out on a day road. Love this place. As always, whenever I sign the visitor's book, I'm just intrigued to know who was here last and from where. I've put my entry in, 21st March, Andy C, exploring lovely churches by bicycle, Bath. But look who was here before me. That person there, granddaughter of Sir Thomas Throckmorton and Lady Elizabeth Throckmorton. Anyway, back at this wonderful church. All the lights are automated, so the sensors uh, go off when I leave. Let's have a wander around the churchyard and I'll show you around. Back outside, looking up at the tower. And straight away, that cold wind's blasting on my face through my ears. And you can hear that roar of traffic over yonder. Just come over to see this. Bit of official stuff there, plan. But it says about the churchyard. Please remember that this is not a municipal cemetery, but a quiet haven where all are invited. Lowland Britain has lost some 90% of unimproved grassland in our lifetime, so we keep some areas to provide a refuge for a greater variety of wildlife. For the people's reference, there's a tap there if you're ever short of water. Oh, look at all these lovely flowers. So it's Come churchyard, come wildlife haven. The church I'm going to be tramping at is Hill Martin, up near Khan. And I've often thought, I'll probably never go there. Why would I go so close to home? What would be the purpose of going in there? So it's tied in perfectly with this, this trip I want to do, exploring all the works of CCT churches. So as long as it all works out, it should be a great little trip. 
I'm going to wait until after Easter because it's going to be half term next week so I always try and avoid school holidays for that sort of thing and also the clocks will be going forward next weekend as well so the evening's going to get lighter oh this is beautiful around here I didn't come down this far last time because it was actually raining I died in the church really more for shorter that looks like the ruins of the remains of part of the church or some kind of building see the arches and the pillar this be facing east so that would be the chancel window there right let's make our way down gosh I wonder if that's like the vestry <laughs> That would correspond with it, wouldn't it? There's like almost like a mini tower there. Oh, look at all the abundance of flowers. Stone seat over there. Go and see what this says. It's a loving shrine, isn't it? In memory of Julia Kentis Duchy, born 1828, died in Nice, 1895, buried at Tortworth. February the 14th, Valentine's Day, 1895. There's this wonderful charter here. Perseverance, I guess that means. Wonderful carvings. Things like gargoyles. Wonderful carvings. I'm a bit in awe of stonemasons. Had my house repointed a few years back. I live in an old Victorian house, bath stone faced, so you cannot just put a bit of strap pointing in that. You've got to use proper lime mortar plaster, and the renovations were done in stone, and their craftsmanship was absolutely amazing. And they're both really, really nice guys as well. I'm intrigued to know what that is behind, actually. I'm not going to go in there because, well, for one thing, it doesn't look safe, and secondly, it's private but yeah that is quite grand doesn't it that looks like it would have been grand at one time anyway time to head up hope my bike's still there <laughs> that stone cross out in the church side i'm repeating what i heard on a cct talk a few months back the lady was saying quite often if you find a stone cross out in a churchyard it could have also been a place where they did outside worship I guess in nice weather but as I was saying about the pews being relatively modern so are gravestones and so it would have been a communal place also for people to come and pay their respects to loved ones who had passed on so whenever I see those I think about that very very old Back out at the gate. See, it's lovingly looked after. These are all old estate properties, I'd imagine. Now you're going to ride up the gravel track, turn left back onto that minor road, and it's about 25 miles back to my home in Bath. I've had a fantastic day out. I hope you've enjoyed coming along. As always, look out for each other, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.